Hello and welcome to Shark Jets, I'm Skid Viz. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to shoot flames out of your hands. Uh, maybe you're a big fan of the game Pilot Wings and you wanna create your own VR version of it, or maybe you're channeling your inner Stark. Not that one, this one. Uh, so we're gonna be doing some jet blasts from the hands. But before we do, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button so that YouTube tells people I am alive. Um, now, without any further ado, let's get to it. All right, so here I am in Unity once again. We're using 2019 LTS and VRIF. So if you don't have that set up, you'll need that for this. So the first thing we're going to do is bring in the XR rig as usual. Okay, and then I'll just bump that off the ground a little bit just for my own sake. And what we're gonna be doing is building on the uh, hand jet that comes with VRIF. So if you've used that before, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if you don't, uh, if you go into the sample scene, you can actually grab this hand jet. Uh, it's laying on one of the tables and it lets you fly around. Um, and it works great, except it requires that you hold this item in your hand. Uh, and we're gonna try and make it so that uh, you just natively can fly without actually having to hold anything. So we're gonna be borrowing heavily from this little device. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and move it out of the way here for a second. Had all these gizmos. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new empty object. And I'm going to set that and call it Shark Jet. It seems fitting. And then I will create a script with the exact same name. There we go. And then I'll open that up. All right, now as usual, I'm gonna go ahead and punch in some code and then I'll come back and explain it. All right, so here we are, let's start at the top. Uh, make sure you're using BNG so that we can go ahead and access the uh, VRIF components. And uh, the first thing we're gonna have is three serialized fields. Uh, the first one is a float called Jet Force, which is going to give us uh, or allow us to put in the amount of force that we wanna use for the rocket. Um, the second thing we're gonna have is a particle system called Jet FX, and that's gonna give us a reference to our particle system so we can make nice little flames come out of our hands. Uh, the third thing we're gonna have is a controller hand and that's a VRIF component, which uh, it's basically just an enumerator, which lets you specify which hand you're using, the left hand or the right hand. And that's gonna be called hand. Um, the next thing is we've got a few private variables. The first one is a game object called player controller, and that's gonna hold the reference to our player controller. Uh, the next one is a smooth locomotion called smooth locomotion and that's gonna hold a reference to the player's controller's smooth locomotion component. Uh, the next one is a player gravity called player gravity. That's going to hold a reference to the player controller's gravity settings. And then the last one here is an audio source called audio source, and that's gonna hold the audio source component and let us uh, play and stop playing the audio for the uh, rocket sounds. Uh, moving right along, we've got three more private variables. The first one is a vector three called move direction, which is just gonna be a variable that holds the direction that we're pointing our hands so that we can uh, travel in that direction. Then we've got two more variables that are Booleans. Uh, one of them is, is flying, the other one is, is falling, uh, and that will let us keep track of whether we're moving uh, or whether we're not uh, using the rockets. So I've collapsed all of these to kind of uh, make it easier to explain them without overloading anyone. Um, so the start method 
all we're doing is getting all of our components and assigning them to the variables. So uh, player controller, we're gonna go ahead and find a game object with the name, uh, with the tag player, because VRIF tags the player controller as player. And then once we have the player controller, we are going ahead and uh, go ahead and get the um, smooth locomotion component, the player gravity component from, from the player controller, and then also get the audio source component from this actual uh, object. So that's all we're doing there. We're just getting uh, the player and grabbing some components from the player that we're going to be using here shortly. Next, we'll move down to this method here called flight check. And basically, all that's going to do is it's going to take the grip amount, the, uh, the value of the button that's being pressed. In my situation, in my example, I'm using the grip button. But uh, if you were using a different button, then you would just be passing the value of that button. Um, and so then we're doing an if statement. And we're going to say if the grip is greater than 0.1, so we're pressing the button uh, even just a little bit. Then we're gonna call a method that I'll explain here in a second called DoJet, which is actually gonna do the flying for us or the uh, moving. And then we're gonna assign the is flying variable to true. Um, and then if that's not true, then we have an if else. So if we're flying, uh, then we're gonna call this method, method called StopJet and we're gonna set is flying to false. So basically, if we're pressing the grip button, then this block here is gonna execute. We're gonna call the doJet method and assign that variable to true. But if the grip is not being pressed and it has a value of zero, then we're gonna check if we're flying. If we are, then we're gonna stop flying and uh, set is flying to false. So now let's go ahead and look at the doJet and stopJet methods. So DoJet does the bulk of the work here. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is disable gravity. So player gravity that gravity enabled equals false. And then the next thing we're gonna do is uh, assign the move direction. So it's gonna get the, um, the transform that we're using, which is gonna be our, our invisible, our game object, our shark jet game object. It's gonna find its forward now you can see I have a little negative here because I don't want to travel, I don't want it to blow me backwards. So I'm going to actually reverse that by just putting that negative sign in front so it's going to get uh, the reverse of forward. And then it's going to multiply that with uh, the jet force that we're putting in there. So it's going to basically be our speed. Um, and then uh, the next thing we're doing is we're setting the locomotion. We're actually using the move character method on it to actually move us. Um, since we're not using uh, a rigid body, we can't apply force. So we actually have to move the character like we're using the controller, um, but we're gonna do it programmatically. So uh, we're calling the move character method on the character controller. We're giving it the uh, path to take basically we're giving it that move direction that we just calculated up there we're multiplying that through times dot delta time so that it's nice and smooth and we're also tacking on the button force which is going to be that grip amount that we have up here so if we're lightly pressing the button it's going to move slower than if we're pushing the button all the way uh, the next thing we're doing here is we're getting the input bridge and we're just going to vibrate that controller to kind of give you some kind of feedback that the rocket is actually working. So we're just setting a frequency, amplitude, and duration. Uh, if you're watching this, make sure not you don't need to type this these grayed out uh, characters here. They're just kind of added by my IDE. Um, so we're passing it a frequency, an amplitude, a duration, and then which hand that we're actually gonna vibrate. Um, so that's what that's doing. The next is just an if statement for the audio source. So it's basically saying if the audio source is not playing, then we'll go ahead and set its pitch and tell it to play. Nothing complicated there. And then we'll do the same with the particle effects. So if the part effect, particle effects, which was called jet effects, uh, if it's not null, it's not empty, if it's actually been assigned, and it's not playing, then we'll go ahead and play it so that we can have the little fires coming out of our hand. 
So that's all that's happening there. And then the opposite of that, we're just stopping things when we let go of the button. So we're basically re-enabling gravity. So player gravity dot gravity enabled equals true. Um, and then we'll check if the rocket sound is playing, then we'll go ahead and stop it. And the same thing with the particle effects. If the jet effects is not null again, and jet effects is playing, then go ahead and stop it. Now, a lot of this code is uh, word for word from the, uh, the hand jet uh, prefab that's in there. I just modified some of it a little bit, but pretty much the same otherwise. Now let's go ahead back into Unity and uh, take care of a couple things here. All right, so now you can see on the shark jet object here, our script has filled in a little bit and you can see the hand that you can choose, whether you're using the left or the right hand. You can see it's looking for a particle effect system and uh, it wants us to provide a force for our uh, jet blast. So I'll go ahead and just set this to one for now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, steal some stuff, some more stuff from the hand jet prefab so I'm gonna go ahead and take away their particle effects. It's basically all I need from this. Uh, so I'm gonna ahead and just duplicate that and then just drag it into my shark jet and disable or delete the hand jet prefab that they have there. Then I'm just gonna make sure that we reset the transform. We don't want it to be wherever it is. We want it to get zeroed out. Now I'm gonna do a couple of things here to this particle effects, particle effect called jet effects. I'm going to set its rotation to 180 because it's coming out, as you can see, it's this is its forward. Um, and so I want, it, I want it to actually not, not go in this direction, I want it to go forward uh, as if we're pushing away. So I'm gonna just set this Y to 180 now you can see that it's uh, it's going in that forward direction as I want. So now we can go back to our shark jet object and assign that particle effects to that. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this shark jet left and make sure that's set to left, yes. And then I'll just go ahead and copy this, or duplicate this. And I'll call this one shark jet right. And set this one to be the right hand. Okay, and then uh, I also know that I want to move the particle effects just a little bit. So um, the reason I'm going to do this is just to position it to match the hand better. Um, well, first, let's go ahead and parent this. As you can see, it's on the ground. We want it to be inside the hands. So we'll open up our XR rig, open up the player controller and find our controllers. All right, so then I'll throw shark jet left into the left controller and shark jet right into the right controller. And then again, I'll go ahead and reset these transforms because you can see it's not inside the uh, it's not centered inside the parent. So I'm just gonna reset this and reset this one as well. And now you can see the, uh, the particles are actually in the hand as they belong. So the uh, next movement I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, just gonna adjust their positions a little bit so that the fire is coming out more on the index finger instead of the palm. That's just uh, what I want to do here. So I'm in the left controller. So I will set this to negative 0.05. And this one is 0 0.05. And it looks a little weird now, but it'll look fine when we're actually testing it out. And I'll do the same over here, except this one won't be a negative 0.05. And this one is 0 0.05 as well. So you can see it kind of aligns better with the index finger there. And that is good to go. Now we wanna make sure that we're using uh, the character controller. 
because the smooth locomotion system has two options. One is rigid body and one is character controller. Um, and it's, uh, this isn't tailored towards the rigid body. So if you're going to use that, this won't work. Um, but as far as a character controller, that should work fine, but you will need smooth locomotion and a locomotion manager and a character controller and all this. Basically, if you leave it as the default, it should work fine. So now we have the left hand set up correctly. We have the uh, hand set to be left. We have the right one set to be right. And that's really all we need to change here. So as a final thing, I'm gonna give myself a platform to travel to. So I'm just gonna basically copy this plane and just uh, you know, move it up and out. See if we can reach that by getting up in the air. So let's go ahead and uh, test this out. All right, so it looks like I got ahead of myself again. Uh, I forgot to grab the audio component that I needed. So I'm gonna bring that prefab out for the hand jet again and just drag that out into the scene. And then I need to grab the audio source, which I forgot to do. So I'll just uh, right click on this or click on this and hit copy component and then find my hand jets and paste them as new. So now we'll have the audio that we're looking for. Uh, and I'll do that to both of them. All right, so now I can delete that hand jet again and let's give it another shot. All right, so here we are. And if I squeeze the grip on either hand, we should get some flames. All right, and if I aim my hands down, we should rise up. If I let go, we should fall back down. So I um, don't remember where, well, I can't see it from the bottom, but uh, let's see if we can fly up and find that other platform. There it is. Now we just aim our hands in the direction we want to travel and uh, you can do it with just one hand and just slowly fall down. And there you have it, quick and easy as usual. If you had a blast, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button so I know you did. If you have any questions or you would have done this differently, please make sure to put that in the comments. Uh, as always, the script that I made on this is available for Patreon members. So if you're interested in that, please become a member. Uh, I'm still Skid Viz. Thanks for watching. Peace out.